everyone. You may remember from previous weeks how Jesus healed people and drove out evil spirits from them. This week is another one of those stories. This time we'll be looking at a boy who was completely controlled and taken over by an evil spirit. Now I wonder what it's like to feel controlled by someone or something. This is my cat. Why don't you say hi to everybody? Hi everybody. What's your name? My name is Lucas. How are you doing? Um, I'm okay. So that very clearly did not go to plan. Um, obviously, I was the one that was talking. Obviously, I was the one controlling his paws. And very obviously, he really just didn't want to be there. And fair enough. I think I just picked him up from the kitchen. He was having a nice little sleep and I'd woke him up. But unlike with Lucas, this boy had no control over his own situation. He was completely possessed by this evil spirit. You could clearly see that I was trying to control Lucas, but it wasn't really working. Unlike with the spirit, people couldn't understand or see what was happening and nobody knew what to do to help. Let us look at the story from the Bible together. Mark chapter nine, verse 14 to 29. At this point, Jesus had just come back from a long walk with three of his disciples. When they came to the other disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. As soon as all the people saw Jesus, they were overwhelmed with wonder and ran to greet him. What are you arguing with them about? he asked. A man in the crowd answered, Teacher, I brought you my son, who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. Now what a stressful situation that sounds. It would be very scary to see somebody you knew controlled completely by an evil spirit and especially worrying for the family and his loved ones. Let me remind you how the evil spirit controlled him. See if you can remember before me. First, it stopped him speaking. Second, it kept throwing him to the ground. Third, it made his mouth foam. It made his teeth gnash, kind of like this, like a dog, almost. And lastly, it made him go rigid, so he couldn't move. Imagine how helpless and powerless it would feel to see someone suffering, but not be able to help them. Imagine how helpless and powerless it would feel to not have control of your own body and speech. Of all the people who should have been able to heal and help, it was the disciples. Successful? It seemed not. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not, said the boy's father. We have seen Jesus drive out evil spirits before, but this time the boy's father asked the disciples to do it. Now the disciples were Jesus' specially chosen followers who had later carried on the work of Jesus after he went back to heaven with God. But I wonder why they couldn't do it. Maybe they were tired and they couldn't concentrate. Maybe they were really hungry and uh, they didn't have enough energy. Maybe they were just too distracted of all the people around them and they just couldn't do it. Jesus knew exactly why the disciples couldn't do it and it definitely wasn't because of any of those reasons. Jesus said to the disciples, you unbelieving generation, how long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? You see, Jesus knew that the real reason why the disciples could not drive out the evil spirit was because they were unbelieving. They didn't really believe or understand God's power to heal and to save. They didn't quite have the faith that was needed 
And this disappointed Jesus. He had been with them for quite a long time. They had seen all the miracles that he had done already. But time and time again, the disciples failed to see or realise what Jesus was trying to tell them. That he was God in the flesh. He was the son of God, the promised king and saviour. And that he had come to bring us to his kingdom. The disciples might have hoped they could drive out the evil spirit by themselves. But their lack of faith showed they didn't truly believe nor did they have the power over the evil spirit. Only Jesus has the power to drive out evil spirits. Now maybe Jesus could have made some excuses for the disciples. He could have said, maybe if you just tried a bit harder, or maybe you need to say this instead, or maybe the evil spirit was a bit deaf and he couldn't hear you and you needed to speak louder. But he didn't say any of those things to make them feel better. Instead, this is what he said. This kind can come out only by prayer. Interesting, isn't it? There's nothing in our story today that says when the boy's father asked them to drive out the evil spirit, that the disciples prayed. We see that instead of going straight to Jesus for help, like the boy's father, they were busy arguing with the teachers of the law in front of a large crowd. That's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? They most likely thought that they could heal the boy by themselves, maybe show off a little bit, show how great they were. Unlike the disciples, Jesus didn't need to show off. Jesus showed God's power to the person who chose to believe and trust him. The one person who had the faith that he wanted to see, the kind of faith that heals. Can you guess who it was? This person was the boy's father. Well done if you guessed it right. It saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a caution. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It has often thrown him into fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. You see, the boy's father showed true faith in Jesus and he realised that it was Jesus that he really needed to help them. Jesus would show everyone that he was God and only God had the power to save the boy. He showed that he could do what the disciples could not. They didn't even need to pray big special magic prayers but believe in Jesus' power to drive out evil spirits. We also see that Jesus has power over life and death. When Jesus saw that a crowd was running to the scene, he rebuked the impure spirit. You deaf and mute spirit, he said. I command you, come out of him and never enter him again. The spirit shrieked, convulsed him violently and came out. The boy looked so much like a corpse that many said he's dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him to his feet and he stood up. Just like how only Jesus had the power that could heal the boy, only Jesus has the ultimate power over life and death. Notice how the passage says, the boy looks so much like a corpse, people thought that he was dead. Now a corpse means a dead body. Nevertheless, Jesus takes him by the hand and lifts him up to his feet, proving the doubt is wrong. This boy wasn't dead. He was alive. This should remind us of what Jesus is truly capable of. He was the Messiah, the Son of God who would rise from the dead. Jesus has a power to do what man cannot. He also helps those who follow him believe. Maybe at first it seemed even the father didn't think that Jesus could do anything to help his son. Jesus even had to encourage him saying, everything is possible for the one who believes. To which the man replied, I do believe, help me overcome my unbelief. Now, does this seem a bit strange to you? How can someone say, I do believe, but then say, help me overcome my unbelief straight after? If I could see after being blind, 
why would I then say, I can see, help me overcome when I can't see. Surely it's enough to be healed once. But once we believe in Jesus, does that mean we will never ever in our life struggle to still believe? The boy's father knew that as a sinful human, he could easily doubt and question God's power. Sometimes there are days, weeks, even years that we will need help when we struggle to believe. Jesus shows us that no matter how small our faith may seem or how much from a scale of one to a hundred we may think we believe in God, when we choose to follow Jesus as our only King and God, we can pray knowing confidently that he will help us believe because he has the power to do what man cannot. So what does this passage mean for us today? What can we now learn or do? Firstly, believe. Believe that he has the power over everything, over evil, over life and death. Maybe you could discuss this a little bit more with your parent or adult later. Secondly, pray. Prayer is putting our faith into action. Prayer is an amazing thing. Everyone can do it, no matter what age you are, whether you're in reception or year six. When we pray, God always listens and he loves it when we talk to him. Using our words, we can pray out loud, inside our head and just thinking them, even writing down our prayers. That's what I like to do in a journal. We can pray anytime, not just at church. We can pray at home, even while brushing our teeth. We can pray at school or when you're walking somewhere. We can pray quietly alone in our bedroom or with friends and family. By prayer, we can ask God to heal us when we feel ill or unwell. By prayer, we can ask God to heal us and help us. But what's even better is that we can pray to ask him to help us overcome our own unbelief. Prayer enables us to trust and rely on God every day. Sometimes it is difficult to believe that our God will do something amazing. But God is worth praying to, because remember, he sent his son to die for us on a cross. And not only that, he rose to life. So now we can believe in him, because he has forgiven our sins and he's made a way for us to know him again. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you that you love us and you sent your son Jesus to walk among us all those years ago. Thank you that we can learn from your word in your Bible. And we thank you that you have the power to do what man cannot. Thank you that because of Jesus, we have new life. Because your son died for us, that we can um, come before you and have our sins forgiven. We pray that you may remind us each day of how powerful you are and to help us when we struggle to believe in you. Help us when we struggle. Please help our families. Please help those around the world who are suffering or those who are currently really sick and need your healing. But most of all, please help us to continue to trust you and know that you have a great plan for us, that you love us. In Jesus' name, amen.